The New Jersey Devils have done it. They have advanced to the second round, beating the New York Rangers in seven games. Trey Matthews joins us to discuss how the Devils did it and to start looking ahead to round two next on the road to the Stanley Cup. Gil Martin here. The Locked On Road to the Stanley Cup continues. We welcome Trey Matthews from Locked On New Jersey Devils to talk about how the Devils beat the New York Rangers in seven games and what their prospects are now for a long postseason run. And Trey, an exciting series, but the Devils win it in seven. What do you think was the biggest reason that the Devils were able to pull off this win in dramatic fashion? Oh my God, where do I start? But here, here's where I do want to start off with. That is one sweet intro. Uh, by the way, I, I love that new intro. So uh, hopefully we hopefully everyone could get it at one point. But anyway, digressing a little bit. It's the story of the underdogs for the New Jersey Devils. And because in game seven, who scored the first goal of the game? It was Michael McLeod. And who set him up? It was Andre Pilat, who was being a pass, able to take the puck away. And he was able to set up Michael McLeod beautifully. And then we how the Devils get their second goal of the game. It's John Marino, like doing a Jack Hughes type of move, trying to go deep on in into the offensive end. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to score, but who's there to clean it up? It's Tomas Tatar. And Eric Halla was also able to score in this game on a great feed from Jack Hughes. So Eric Halla now has four goals this series. But I think a lot of people are forgetting the fact that Akira Schmidt shut out the Rangers once again. That's twice this series. And talk about a complete 360 for a goalie because in the last matchup in game six, he had to be pulled relatively early and replaced by Vitek Vancek because he didn't have his good outing. But I, I commend Lindy Ruff so much for still sticking with his gut and still relying on Akira Schmidt going out there in net. And Akira Schmidt rebounded, redeemed, whatever you want to call it. He was able to fight back and shut out the New York Rangers. And now the New Jersey Devils just continue to add to their already fantastic year. All right, you gave me a whole bunch of choices in the answer to my first question. Who do you think is my second question? Who do you think was the series MVP? Akira Schmidt, uh, that's my MVP because Akira, let's think about this. Akira Schmidt is building up one heck of a storyline for himself during the course of the playoffs because let's face it, he's a 22 year old rookie. A lot of people didn't have high expectations for him. Originally, he wasn't even supposed to be the backup during the course of the playoffs. It was supposed to be Mackenzie Blackwood. So he starts into the backup role. Devils are in a must win situation in game three. You don't want to go down 3-0. And, and he's able to shut the door down once again. And every game, he got better. So game three, he was good. Game four, it, it was a significant improvement. Game five, he gets a shutout. Game six, he struggles. Game seven, rebounds and able to shut the door down. Akira Schmidt, I'm running out of adjectives to describe his overall game, but we all know how special he was, uh, at, at least Devils fans were. But now the world is starting to realize like what Akira Schmidt is capable of doing. Because in this playoffs, Akira Schmidt has a 4-1 record, a 1.38 goals against average, and a 951 save percentage, and he made 1.61 goals saved ab uh, above expected tonight. So Akira Schmidt has been phenomenal, and he is the first, uh, I, let's see, he is the first uh, Devils goalie rookie to start in the playoffs since Martin Brodeur in 1994. And speaking of which, the New Jersey Devils, for the first time since 1994 and the second time in franchise history, they were able to overcome a 2-0 deficit and win the series, something that also hasn't been done since 1994. And they won their first playoff series since 2012 when they went to the Stanley Cup Finals. So the New Jersey Devils, during the course of this year, uh, the mindset was like, they've been doubted a lot this year, like a whole lot. But yet they continue to surprise a lot of people. They continue to surprise me. When they went down 2 nothing. I was like, look, it's not looking good. It's looking very grim. But at the same time, why doubt the Devils now? Like, why, why not them? Why not? Yeah, and they, and they keep forcing people to ask that question as the series went on and, and now as they head to round two. Was there a potential weakness exposed against the Rangers that the Devils will need to address as they head into round two against Carolina? Uh, stop taking unnecessary penalties. That's the name of the game because you allow Chris Kreider to get a lot of power play goals during the course of the year. And in fact, early on in this game, the Devils were playing their brand of hockey. They were playing really well. 
They were playing fast. They were keeping the puck in their offensive end. But how did the Rangers hang around in period number one and able to keep it a uh, a scoreless uh, game? The Rangers were able to go to the power play a few times. The New Jersey Devils need to cut down on the penalties if they want any chance of success because that was their Achilles heel in game six, getting those unnecessary penalties. In fact, I believe that was also the issue, if I recall correctly, in game two. So that's what the New Jersey Devils need to do. you you got to stop taking those unnecessary penalties. It's something that I talked about during the course of the regular season. Yes, the Devils have one of the best penalty killers in the entire NHL. Like they, their, their uh, penalty kill percentage was, was one of the best. However, you cannot be playing with fire, especially when you only have four lives during the course of the playoffs. So that's the weakness that the Devils need to improve upon, which is don't get those unnecessary penalties. Some calls will not go your way, but how do you respond to them? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. How does this series win change the long-term outlook of the Devils? Is this already, this playoff run considered a success? And if not, what more needs to be done? It's already been considered a success because the one thing I said was, here's my goal for the Devils, especially now with the Boston Bruins out, maybe they could go even further. Um, My goal for the Devils was make it out the first round, get yourselves relevant into the picture once more because a lot of people still don't believe in your capability. So uh, like I said, when I appeared on this show not too long ago, I spoke to Nico Heischer about a month or two ago, and he was like, I don't care what those people say. We focus on what's going on in our locker room and uh, just do what we can do. And why not? Let's prove everyone wrong. And they were able to do that. Spoke to Bruce Driver uh, a a month or two back. He said during the course of 1995 Stanley Cup run, the Devils were always the heavy underdogs. They went against a Detroit Red Wings team that, uh, let's see, they – they had 11 Hall of Famers on the roster, if I recall correctly. And I believe the very next year, the Detroit Red Wings, before the Boston Bruins broke it this year, had the all-time uh, uh, record for most wins in a single season. So Bruce Driver says they stuck to their game plan. And a lot of people want to say it's a trap defense, but um, they, they, that wasn't in their uh, dictionary definition. That was just how they played the game of hockey. That was a, a, a play style that worked for them. So – That's what the Devils had to do this year. Stick to your game plan, and this has already been a success. Get yourselves relevant into the playoffs once again because last time they appeared in the playoffs in 2018, they were gentlemen swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning. They they lost the series in five. Now they took it to seven games. Even if they lost the seventh game, I think they still turned a lot of heads. Now they move on into the next round. So this season, the success and the capability of some of these players on the roster, it's not a fluke. It is a it is a well thought out oiled machine. Yeah. And the further they go in the playoffs, the more they learn about what it takes to win in the playoffs. So that bodes well for the future of the team. Trey, thank you so much. That does it for our devil's review here on the locked on road to the Stanley cup. Be sure to subscribe to or follow locked on devils for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast, the locked on podcast network, your team every day.